Okay, so I'll be bringing you hopefully what will be a series of videos here in the future uh, on various products from VISIR. Uh, picked up on them at SHOT Show 2022 in Vegas. Uh, made contact with them subsequently and offered to do some testing and evaluation of some of their products. So the first one they sent, E2N is the model number. And that's what it looks like. So a familiar format if you've been around thermal monoculars for some time, but you know what's really important is the software and the uh, hardware components that comprise the unit, and uh, that's really what I was after to test. It has a uh, port on top for video and charging. Uh, they do include the USB cable to charge it. When you get a charge, you get about 15 to 20 hours, depending on environmentals. It has an internal battery. Uh, it has a plate on the bottom with a uh, standard tripod or uh, camera style screw. Uh, it comes with the lanyard installed in it rear eye box focus I'll get you the specs on that uh, lens in there and so uh, what I intend to do here while I get it on the table today just kind of give you some idea of why I requested to review um, this type of monocular I think that has a 50 millimeter lens on it uh, high base magnification and you know typically when I'm spotting and stalking pigs I want as much magnification as I can get uh, in scanning these large fields that we cover. Uh, and so it works fantastically for that. However, when we have game down uh, in close and in scrub brush, you're not able to really back off uh, the focus and the field of view at all. So, I mean, you're, you're looking through very narrow uh, field of view. So that's where I thought an item such as this would assist me uh, in recovering animals uh, because you're gonna get the widest field of view you'd say you're, you're able to focus it up close uh, and so that was the intended uh, purpose for requesting to do a review on this also before I put this away um, just have a look at the size differences here right so this usually runs CR 123s and those are expensive and it eats them up pretty good so I have an external battery pack tied on uh, to the unit itself there is bulk and mass here that is not going in a pocket no matter what I try uh, so another aspect here of the form factor of this unit here I uh, hopefully will find that I can tuck this in a pocket and take it with me uh, into static blind hunting situations and then obviously in uh, game recovery situations uh, and not have the bulk and mass of that unit there. So, two totally different uh, aspects of thermal monoculars here. We'll set this one aside, uh, and let's go ahead and power this uh, on and go through what the features are and how to activate them. All right, let's talk about some of the specifications for the E2N thermal monocular. Uh, it has a 256 by 192 sensor. 12 micron. Uh, it has a refresh rate of 25 hertz. The objective lens up front is 13 millimeters. Uh, it has uh, electronic zoom. It'll go to two times and 20 hours of battery life. Um, how I will be bringing you footage is I use this external DVR uh, that through a series of connections and cables interfaces with the provided connector for this. So I'll show you how to activate video out and then essentially it's just feeding a video stream that is being captured by this device. So I've got for this review I'm carrying this around you don't have to do that but that's how I wanted to bring the visual illustration to you of the function of the of the unit. Alright so when you first uh, operate the E2N a couple of uh, straightforward things you want to power it on with this front button here so you press it for two or three seconds you should hear the shutter internally going. It will show a green LED solid right here. Kind of hard to see with this lighting today. All right, and then you'll want to focus your screen because everything that you're doing through the E2N, you have to have a crystal clear image on this back eye display. And so that's where this rotary focus control comes in. And so you'll just simply roll it back and forth and fine tune it to get 
a good visual on the screen. Uh, and so right now video out is not on. To activate video out you press and hold the zoom and then it'll have video out icon in the lower right of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and connect my DVR. All right, DVR is connected. Okay, so that is showing you uh, the current screen from the E2N. So inside the scopes viewfinder, I have a power indicator in the lower left of the battery. I have a nuke, or non uniformity correction, the calibration mode. It has an A next to it for automatic, that's the mode it's set in. And then by pressing and holding that uh, zoom button, that video out icon there to the right is uh, showing. So it's a pretty clear layout. There's not much um, interference or other icons or things getting in the way as you're using the E2N. So you're utilizing your full screen real estate for what you need it for, which is scanning uh, and spotting. If I were to press the power key one time, just real quick, when it's on, it'll go into standby. I'll do that last because it will um, end the recording. It basically shuts off the video uh, out streaming. Uh, it does have a standby mode, so I'll cover that at the end. And then this mode button here that has a, a P on it, that is to change your uh, color palettes. You'll see this in uh, the follow-up videos where I cycle through the color palettes. So for this tabletop review, I'm just illustrating to you that quick presses of this button is resulting in a small icon coming up in the center of the screen that tells you which uh, polarity you're in. And your choices are white hot, black hot, red hot, pseudo color, and target highlight. Um, so you get five different color palettes to use there. Sliding down and button operation, pressing the e-zoom quickly is going to bring up an icon in the upper left that says two times. Pressing it again takes you back to the native magnification. So again, e-zoom pressed one time quickly, activates digital zoom. Uh, and then we have the brightness uh, button in the back. Pretty straightforward. You have six different brightness settings and as you click through those, uh, can't tell with the way I have it on the tabletop here, but again I'll show you that out in the field. Uh, a couple other things. So if you press and hold all three of these buttons simultaneously and watch the result for the little icon there that has an A next to it. M. Uh, so at any given time, a quick eye check of the bottom right, and you'll either have an A or an M letter next to that calibration, and that tells you you're in manual or automatic. Uh, if you just prefer to control when the scope calibrates, you have it in manual, and then to calibrate it, you're going to press these last two buttons, the back two buttons, simultaneously. Let's see if we hear the shutter. There you go. So that's how you calibrate the scope in manual mode. Uh, if you're a set it and forget it kind of person, just leave it in automatic or switch it over to automatic uh, and you'll be good to go. Alright, so I'm going to uh, stop the recorder. So again, scope is on. I have a green LED light on, solid. And once you have it started up, it doesn't have a very long startup time to begin with. I mean, I'm saying under three seconds probably, and you're, you're running. Uh, but if you just simply want to uh, kick it in standby, you click that one time. And now that LED will blink continuously while it's in standby. Uh, to bring it back on, you can just press any of the buttons one time. And that wakes the scope up instantly. So, pretty nifty little feature there. Uh, also, when you power off, right, so that is powered off, Orphis has a LED in it. And so if you're in the blind and you've got it powered off, you can press that front mode button and just hold it. And you've got yourself a little light to uh, search the area around your feet for any gear you're trying to get a hold of in the dark to it. I'm hoping that uh, this product here brings a new um, tool to my toolkit, especially for static blind hunting. Again, I showed you the bulk and heft of my normal spotter. 
Uh, my thermal rifle sights, they're mounted on large guns that aren't easy to maneuver in a blind. So if I can go out in a 100 yard blind static hunting situation with this, and it give me the ability to detect, then for the price, I think it's well worth uh, spending that to have that in your toolkit. All right, we'll see you out there. All right, hopefully this uh, video clip here will give you an idea and sense of the performance capabilities of the E2N, uh, spotting and observing uh, persons at this range right here. These two gentlemen are 25 yards away. I am in white hot mode right there. I activated the E zoom. There's black hot mode, red hot, pseudo color, and target ID. Now these two guys are six foot tall, about 200 pounds, so uh, average uh, size gentleman. The uh, guy on the left is wearing shorts, so that's why you see the top of his legs is appearing hot, whereas the guy on the right is wearing full uh, pants, so you don't see his uh, heat signature below the belt there. They're going to walk it out to 50 yards and again stop in just at various ranges I'm adjusting uh, not only color palettes to give you that illustration of the differences that red hot is, is pretty neat uh, but I'm also uh, checking the focus so uh, there's the e-zoom So basically, as you're uh, identifying or detecting targets at various ranges, you'll be using that rotary dial on the left back of the scope to fine-tune your focus for max clarity. Uh, they're going to walk out to 75 yards now. So certainly, if you're looking at this type product for maybe some home uh, protection or observation, uh, this would give you an idea of what a man-sized target looks like through the E2N. So stopped at 75, E-zoom to two times. White hot, black hot. Red alert. Pseudo color, two times and target identification mode. They're out in an open field. Those are uh, brush piles that are uh, they look like mounds out there and then that distant wood line is probably about 500 yards away. Uh, so in this scene here they're the only heat signatures in this field at this point. And they're going to go ahead and make their final stop at 100 yards for us. So clearly you can detect with the E2N quite easily, actually, at 100 yards, man-sized target. Can't really ID um, in terms of telling which person is what. There's black hot, red hot, pseudo color, and E-zoom and target ID. And so as they walk back you'll see what I mean on the identification aspects. So let's uh, let's get them walking back now. <laughs> 